Welcome to Desk Geek. What we're going to do today is part two of our software for Linux. And I've got a couple great things thanks to the recommendations of this community. Thank you guys so much for all the love in the comments, for all the suggestions and things to try out. Sometimes I can be a little hard headed. Probably the people who are recommending Arch Linux to me right now, uh, but I am checking out everything you guys say and putting it to good use, and I appreciate all the love so much that I wanted to do this video outside. It's the eve of Thanksgiving. We're out here in the Georgia mountains. You can see the beautiful fall trees behind, and I've been playing with Linux Mint, which you can see here on my laptop. This laptop, by the way, is not a very powerful laptop. It's an XPS 13. Uh, convertible and it's running OBS Studio right now this webcam of course and all the other software that I have running up perfectly fine without hesitation or issue but Linux Mint it is so so beautiful and I'm very excited to continue getting into Arch now that I know the really only differences in the terminal have to do with the packages thank you guys again for making me aware of that but this video is really to talk about software so, if you're still using Ubuntu 16.10, don't worry, you're not behind. We will do a video on distributions eventually within this 30 days. Right now, most of us are sticking to Ubuntu. If you want, you can try out Linux Mint as well. But Ubuntu is still the primary software on my main machine. So, what are some software since last week that I've gone to install and that I've come to love? Well, you guys recommended one of the issues I was having was a good OneNote replacement. So two suggestions came up that I really enjoyed. One was Cherry Tree, and Cherry Tree was a more recent recommendation, and I went and checked it out, and I really love it. In fact, what you're seeing right here is Cherry Tree, and what you can do is you can go and save this into Dropbox. So if you're familiar with Dropbox, Dropbox has a native... Uh, installation to Linux so you can install it just like on a Windows PC you have a Dropbox folder and you can access all your files here so what I do is I utilize cherry tree I create a node here and I am able to of course use any of this kind of bolding markup italics create lists check boxes etc just like OneNote I save it in Dropbox and that means I can access it anywhere now the only caveat to it is when I access it on an iPhone the file format shows me more of a, of a HTML language version of this or markup language version of this so that I'm seeing all of the code, etc. H1 for headers and things like that. But not something I can't work around and probably get you more used to some coding language. So for that, you need to install Cherry Tree and Dropbox if you want to use this uh, suggestion here. Let me go back there. So Cherry Tree and Dropbox, once you install those, both from the package store, they're both available on the package store, or you could go to the respective websites and they'll show you how to install. The easiest one is just go into your package manager and install it from there. So no terminal access or anything needed. You just need a Dropbox account. And both of these, of course, like most things in Linux, are completely free. The next thing I want to talk about is Audacious. So this is a media player for music. You want to listen to some beautiful music? Well, Audacious is beautiful in itself, and there are many great media players out there. This is one that I happen to like that I found uh, had a lot of great reviews, and I've loaded some of my music here. I love that it breaks my music down into genres. It will show me what's playing here, and I won't play anything because, of course, it would get copyright flagged immediately. Even with my low count of views, you'd imagine, couldn't imagine how many times I get copyright flagged. But no, it plays music. It does the equalizer perfectly well. Uh, so it's got some graphical things and plugins that you can add to it. It's very adaptable, perfect replacement for those who are used to iTunes or something. You're going to get much, much more out of this audio player. Uh, the next thing we'll talk about is spectacle. So I use a lot of screenshots. So if I'm going to a specific product website or whatnot, I'll go on and I'll grab a screenshot. And I need that to allow me to grab it by region. And spectacle does just that. So actually in Mint, it's not called spectacle. It's called K-Nap, K-Snapshot. But for Ubuntu, you're going to download uh, spectacle and you can just get that right out of the software center and you can see I can take a new snapshot it can be full screen 
or I can select freehand region, a section of a window, rectangular, etc., and snap that image I need off of that website or whatnot. So that came in handy. Handbrake, something very familiar with Windows. If you're doing any type of ripping of your DVD or Blu-ray collection and making it digital, Handbrake is available. Uh, sudo apt-get install Handbrake. I think it might be available in the software stores as well, so check that one out. Um, I have Etcher on here, which is creating a bootable media because I was creating USB drives to install Linux and then realized that all of the distributions from Ubuntu to Linux have USB creators built in. So if you just type in bootable, you will have it right there and you can just install that. And Chrome. In order to play Netflix and Amazon Prime, you're going to need Chrome. It's the only one that seems to be allowed to use all the Flash Play plugins and HTML5 plugins and DRM restrictions that they have. So definitely check out Chrome if you're wanting to play Netflix or Amazon Prime. Um, Simple Note is the other option that people recommended for a replacement to OneNote, so I'll bring it up here. And I like Simple Note a lot. One of the things I love about it is it has a native app in iOS, so you just like OneNote, you have your app there. Anything you put in here will work. Um, the thing I don't like is it doesn't have a markup language, so there's no there's no bolding, italicizing, or anything unless you can actually code in markup language as you're writing things but the whole purpose is taking quick notes so writing you know h1 and then backslash h1 and your carrots for each of these is really annoying when you're trying to create those but for a very quick note taker simple note works very very well and one of my favorite recommendations here is this find alternative to programs and this is a website it's called alternative Two. and if you are following along in this video definitely bookmark this site I'll have it in a link down below but you can type in anything you want to replace anything you're using in Windows like OneNote for instance and you can come down here and you will find all of the options that are available to replace that software with and of course you want to find one that has Linux built into it so this is an amazingly intuitive site that is very, very helpful. Highly recommended if you're going along with this. So that's my video. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Once again, thank you to the community for all of the love and kindness. It's one of the things I love about Linux. The people are some of the nicest, kindest, helpful people around. They really want you to get into Linux, and they will do anything to help you along the way, whether it's IRC chats, forums, etc. So don't be afraid to ask your questions, even in the community down below. Um, so these are the software picks part two. If you haven't seen part one, you can click on my other videos or hit subscribe and they'll get recommended to you. Until next time, I hope you guys get out there and enjoy yourself a really great Thanksgiving meal with friends or family. Get out there and fill your brains. Don't get subscribed. Don't like the video.